I want to take a second look at this fantastic piece of equipment designed by Akita Tactical, which is of course the company owned by my good friend Mark Denny. Let's contrast these. This versus this. This of course is not a no copy. It is the Cold Steel Kudu. You'll look at the difference. If you contrast them, you'll see the difference in length and of course difference in width and thickness. This, however, is a far more potent weapon. This thing is designed for professionals. Now, as you know, the Okapi and the Kudu would be used in this fashion. This is how we hold it for training. This is how I typically hold it. Right, the reason being that if there's any kind of accident, this is the result and we don't have the cutting edge. Of course, this has been professionally dulled. And I've got to thank a good friend of mine in France for that. So, now, you know from the Piper system, the way things move, that this, the complementary hand is often out in front of the blade. Now, part of that is due to the design of the weapon, of course. This thing is fairly blunt, at least not the Kudu, but the Okapi. So traditionally back home, this blade is fairly blunt and it is the stabbing edge that is important. So you don't see a huge amount of slicing, you see a fair degree of stabbing. Historically, that goes back to the kinds of shanks you found in prisons, cheap makeshift weapons, and of course the low quality you get in a $2 blade. Movements like this are common. You'll see things like that, but you do know from working with superior weapons of this type that we provide some kind of defense to ourselves and we work behind the blade as opposed to within the pipe system where the blade is often behind us and we protect the weapon. So small difference between Western and African concept in terms of fighting. Now if I were going to use this, this provides a degree of risk when this hand moves in front. The notes it tucks in very well. Now I'll assume that you're going to be properly tied in your tactical gear right you may be wearing tactical gloves which is how this hole is designed fairly large to accommodate those gloves provide retention as well as work very comfortably with firearms but differences philosophically and practically this hand now needs to be protected because we cannot afford damage to the complementary hand so things change so once we start bridging Chupacabra and Piper, or even start merging them, there needs to be a shift to account for the dangerously sharp blade in this weapon, as well as the half blade on this side. Let me go a little closer. Okay. Ah, I've disabled auto focus on the camera. You may not see that, but we have a half blade on this side that terminates here. So, or half edge rather. So, this would change these movements would now alter so that we can work, we can use the concepts taken from within the pipe system as I've been teaching it. So these elbows are functional, but the complementary hand is protected. So if we were to move and fight, we would be making sure that this hand stays behind the weapon. Now, we can help to extend the range, of course, by allowing the hand to extend and maintaining contact. We can come in, protect ourselves, strike out. We can support the weapon in different ways. We can protect ourselves, strike out, cover low, strike out, cover low, strike out, slice. Additional functionality that does not exist within Piper due to the Okapi, but becomes immediately accessible when we alter the weapon. And of course, the fact that we're very sharp bladed, we can now stab, slice, stab, stab, slice, stab, elbow, return, slice and rip, slice. So we have a slightly different dynamic now, and there is more danger posed to the opponent because now you're not only stabbing, you're also cutting. 
So if your stab doesn't go through the way you intend on the way back, you can also cut. Now, also, you'll notice we're defending high. We're now defending and attacking low, switching up, switching down. This allows us to bring the elbow to bear, strike, and we're maintaining focus on our opponent as we're moving forward and moving through the environment. One thing to keep in mind, notice as always, when moving towards us, the weapon spaces out. We do not bring it back like this. The weapon does not face towards us. This is lethal, this is dangerous, this is stupid. Okay, but if we strike this way, we can attack with the elbow, attack to the side, attack to the rear. If we sweep it around carefully, this allows us to index using our sense of touch and the way that our joints work to know that we are able to defend around us in a fairly wide arc of nearly 360 degrees. This angle is slightly limited, but I think it's a fairly small trade-off. We can compensate there by simply rotating the body. And here we have two weapons impacting one to impact and stop any force, and two, to drive the weapon home. So we have <laughs> the ability to use this weapon as well as protect this hand, provide additional cover, and work around us in a fairly wide arc, nearly 360 degrees. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. I hope that was enlightening, <laughs> right? Now, do note that in the, I would say the pure form of the chupacabra, if we're striking, we're moving in this fashion. I do find that I do need to make small accommodations, as in not necessarily protecting my face, the side, but using this to ward of danger and making slight modifications, and this is what's <coughs> working for me. All right. <sighs> movements of this nature work fine. Close-in movements work fine. This allows me to use supporting strikes, elbow, and then also alter the weapon, alter the target, alter the angle, alter the height. You have a lot more to deal with than simply when working with this. Like this, I can bring three weapons to bear. If I do release the hands, I can now start to bring my forearm and my fist to bear back to here. Now, I would think some of those might be more advanced applications, things that need to be practiced once you're fairly competent at a basic level. But I've had the chupacabra at the basic level worked on me. It is effective, it is scary effective. And, uh, yeah, I've got Benji <laughs> of uh, Dog Brothers Europe fame to thank for that experience. So yeah, definitely eye-opening, definitely humbling. So yeah, Mark has designed an incredible weapon. It allows for very, very tight movement around you. And to bring a host of alternatives to bear, you can make the weapon disappear, appear. You can defend yourself. You can defend, notice I'm using my arms to protect my critical areas, my vulnerable areas, as much as possible to provide interference, provide disruption, but also conceal my weapon, add to my blows. I'm not relying on just the weapon. So I'm inserting, adding, and allowing for lots of different things to happen. I think this tool moves really, really well. The grip is solid. I love the way I can grip the thumb like this provides excellent support. You've got excellent tactile feedback. My hands right now in Poland, it is, it's hot here in summer, but I've got excellent tactile feedback from this weapon. The weighting is fantastic. It's great balance, good comfort, but also the texture on the blade, sorry, the texture on the handle. I've got really good grip. I've got confidence in the weapon. That's something I'd strongly recommend you to have a look at akitatactical.com. This is the Shiba. Of course, you've got the Akita, which is its bigger brother. This one is designed for better concealment. 
and uh, yeah mark can definitely tell you more about this one but definitely recommended by me thank you